Grenoble, a city in the French Alps. Here, the other global player, Suez Lyonnais de So, has shown how the competence and experience of a private company are to be combined with the interests of the mayor. For a hundred years, the water was under public administration, which functioned really well. As I was elected into the city council of Grenoble in 1989, the pipes, canalization, water reservoirs and the water pump system were in good condition. The mayor at the time, who was the former environmental minister, decided, however, to privatize in 1989 and passed on the complete management of water to Lyonnais de Zou, Suez. Here is where Suez bribed the mayor. And it's here where the decision was made to privatize the water in Grenoble. This is also the place where the corrupt mayor was sentenced for privatizing the water to Lyonnais de Zou's advantage. The bribe sum of 2 million euros was paid to him in the form of trips, cruises, apartments, and by financing his election campaign. The three people from Suez mainly responsible were also sentenced with corruption. But the moral person, the company itself, was not sentenced. The chief executive at the time was Jérôme Monod who later became the first advisor to the president of the Republic of France, Jacques Chirac. The mayor was Alain Carignon. He was sentenced to several years in prison. As we wrote the book, he was still minister of communication. That made our job difficult. When the book came on the market, he was already in jail. Throughout the whole time, he remained close to Sarkozy. He's seen on photos next to Mr. Sarkozy during the election campaign. You see that on this montage here as well. Together, all is possible. And he remains a close friend to the highest person in the French state. À Grenoble, we call it the lesson from Grenoble. Our water supply was in private hands for 10 years. Now it's been handled by the community again since 10 years. So we can compare. What happened during the time of privatization? Lyonnais de Zou confiscated the complete knowledge. They even printed their stamp on all the pipeline maps. They made the know-how and the heritage their own. At that time, there were no one left within the public service with enough knowledge and who could control them. The corporation raised the water prices and reduced pipeline maintenance and renovations to draw higher profits. This is the water price at the time of privatization. Privatization at Suez. The price goes up. We take it back into our hands. And here we see how the price has developed. At the same time, we've tripled the maintenance work, the renovations of the canal network and installations. Obsah videa odpovídá na některé základní otázky. Budu velmi rád, když mi sdělíte váš názor na jeho obsah tady dolů pod video. A současně, když mi napíšete odpověď na základní otázku. Kdo má dle vašeho názoru mít v rukou českou vodu, vodárenskou infrastrukturu, hospodaření s vodou a peněžní toky a zisky z vody? Zahraniční koncerny nebo městské vodárny? Pokud jste tady poprvé, tak budu rád, když se stanete součástí komunity lidí, kteří se zajímají o dění a situaci s vodou v České republice. Proto jsem pro vás tady připravil možnost stát se odběratelem videí, které jednou za 14 dnů tady dostanete. 
a současně tady dole pod videem máte možnost si stáhnout analýzu, kterou jsem napsal o vodárenství pro Transparency International. Pověz mi pravdu o vodě a proč ní čas plyne jako voda. Proč ji nechávat náhodě, není to škoda. S vodou tu pravdu polikám, doufám, že nejsem sám.